So let's start with the very important topic in pharmacology and that would be autonomic nervous system. So I'll start with the very basic. So we have what we call as the nervous system in our body, nervous system. Now nervous system is divided into two parts. The first part is the central nervous system, the CNS. Central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord. So we have brain and we have the spinal cord. These constitute what we call as the central nervous system. Now from the brain and the spinal cord, what comes out? We have the nerves which are coming out of the CNS that is the brain and the spinal cord. And these nerves constitute the other part of the nervous system that we call as the peripheral nervous system. So peripheral nervous system is the other part of nervous system, central and peripheral, two parts of nervous system. Central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord. Nerves come out and nerves constitute what we call as the peripheral nervous system. So peripheral nervous system is a system of nerves. Now nerves can be of two types. What are these two types? Nerves can be what we call as the sensory nerves that will bring sensation, any sensation into CNS or nerves can be motor nerves. Motor nerves will carry impulse from the CNS to all parts of the body. Now motor nerves can further be divided into two parts. Motor nerves which are carrying impulse from CNS to all parts of the body can be going to what we call as the voluntary structures. Voluntary structures. What is a voluntary structure? Voluntary structure is an organ that is under your control, that is under your will. So these are basically skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscles you all know will move only when your brain wants them to move. So they are direct under control of your will, voluntary in nature. Or motor nerves can go to what we call as the involuntary structures. Now what are involuntary structures? Any structure that is made up of smooth muscle, whether it is lung, GIT, urinary bladder or cardiac muscle that is heart not under your direct control and also glands. glands. So any structure made up of smooth muscle, cardiac muscle or glands is involuntary in nature and motor nerves can go to these involuntary structure. So the first thing that we are trying to understand is what is autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system. What is autonomic nervous system? Number one, it is a part of peripheral nervous system. So number one point, it is a part of peripheral nervous system. Number one point. So it is a system of nerves. Which nerves? Motor nerves. Not sensory, but the motor nerves. Okay. So peripheral nervous system and motor nerves. Which motor nerves? Those motor nerves which are going to involuntary structures. Involuntary structures which I have already told you that is the smooth muscle, cardiac muscle and the glands. So that is autonomic nervous system. It is a part of peripheral nervous system. Okay. Composed of motor nerves which are going to the involuntary structures of the body. Okay, so throughout the ANS, we will talk about structures which are made of smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, that is heart and glands. So I hope that is clear. What is autonomic nervous system? Part of peripheral nervous system composed of motor nerves going to involuntary structure. Okay, now autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts. So we will come to now autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is mainly divided into two parts two parts so we have two divisions two main divisions of ans what are these divisions called as these divisions are called as either sympathetic nervous system sympathetic nervous system or opposite to sympathetic that is called as the parasympathetic nervous system So sympathetic and parasympathetic. Now these are two parts of 
autonomic nervous system sympathetic and parasympathetic now you see sympathetic the word sympathetic has come from the word sympathy okay this word has come from sympathy now when do we require sympathy from others that is a simple question that we can answer sympathy we expect others to be sympathetic to us when we are under stress okay whenever we are under stress we require sympathy of others we want others to be sympathetic so whenever whenever our body is in any kind of stress whenever the body is any kind of stress a part of autonomic nervous system becomes active okay a part of ans becomes active that part is called sympathetic nervous system clear sympathetic nervous system will become active whenever you are under stress so that is why it is also called as system of fear fight and flight fear fight and flight these represent stressful situation so whenever the body is under any kind of stressful situation a part of ans becomes active that is called as sympathetic nervous system okay now the moment stressful situation is over activity of sympathetic system will decline okay because it is a system to deal with stress so the moment stress is over activity of sympathetic system will decline and some other part of ans will become active and that will be called para sympathetic nervous system okay so parasympathetic nervous system is a system for what we call as the non stressful situation non stressful situation okay so sympathetic will be active during stressful situation and parasympathetic will be active during non stressful situation so parasympathetic system is sometimes also referred to as system of rest and digest rest and digest okay so these are the two main divisions of autonomic nervous system the sympathetic and parasympathetic now it is very obvious that a human body most of the time in our day most of the time we are under non stressful situation stress occurs only in a part of uh, human life so most of the time we are under non stressful situation so it must be absolutely clear that which is the part of cns or ans which is mostly active that will be parasympathetic okay because in our life most of the time we are under non stress so parasympathetic system is the dominant system whenever stress will increase sympathetic activity will increase so that is the basic classification definition of autonomic nervous system now before going further we would like to uh see what are the broad effects what are the main effects of these sympathetic and parasympathetic system on the major organs of the body just a brief discussion so let's come sympathetic and parasympathetic so for sympathetic we will be using the term sympathetic nervous system sns and for parasympathetic we will be using parasympathetic nervous system that is pns so we will draw a table wherein we will write which organ we are talking effect of sympathetic and effect of parasympathetic nervous system now in autonomic nervous system always begin with the discussion of cardiac muscle or the heart so the first organ that we will take is heart heart okay first organ is heart now you all know whenever you have stress what happens to heart heart start beating faster it starts beating with more force so sympathetic stimulates heart sympathetic stimulates heart it will increase it will increase heart rate hr is heart rate and it will also increase force of contraction fc is force of contraction so sympathetic stimulates heart simple to remember it increases heart rate it increases force of contraction parasympathetic does the opposite parasympathetic will inhibit the heart so parasympathetic decreases heart rate clear so how to remember sympathetic stimulates heart parasympathetic inhibits heart simple now how to remember the effect on all other organs so that is also very very simple so let's say the other organ that we will take is smooth muscle okay smooth muscles now smooth muscles form various organs smooth muscles can form lung smooth muscles can form git 
smooth muscles can form urinary bladder and smooth muscles also form the pupil in the eye all these organs are nothing but structures made up of smooth muscles whether it is lung git bladder pupil now you see how to remember heart is stimulated by sympathetic and inhibited by parasympathetic on all other organs on all other organs you just reverse the phenomena so all other organs will be inhibited by sympathetic and stimulated by parasympathetic simple heart is stimulated and all other organs are inhibited by sympathetic so lung or smooth muscles now you see if you are going to inhibit a smooth muscle that means the smooth muscles will now relax smooth muscles will now relax with sympathetic and it will constrict or contract with parasympathetic clear sympathetic system will inhibit all other organs so it will inhibit smooth muscles they will relax so now what will happen in lung if lung will relax there will be bronco dilation and parasympathetic will stimulate so bronco constriction clear similar in git git will relax via sympathetic system so there will be decreased in peristalsis decrease in git contraction decreased peristalsis okay parasympathetic will increase the contraction so increase in peristalsis increase in peristalsis clear similarly bladder bladder will contract by which system parasympathetic parasympathetic is stimulating the smooth muscles so bladder will contract the bladder will contract urine will come out so voiding of urine voiding of urine will be a parasympathetic feature and retention of urine retention of urine will be a sympathetic coming to pupil sympathetic will inhibit pupil muscle will relax so pupil will dilate that we call as midriasis midriasis okay dilation of pupil relaxation of pupil causing dilation midriasis sympathetic and parasympathetic will contract pupil and pupil will become smaller that is called as meiosis meiosis so simple heart is stimulated by sympathetic all other organs are inhibited the last organ that we will discuss will be called glands glands again the feature remains the same that sympathetic inhibits so it will be decreased in secretion decreased secretion with sympathetic while the secretions will increase with parasympathetic so increase in all secretions okay now there will be an exception and that we will see how how it will occur but please remember an exception will be there sweating sweating will be increased by both sympathetic also and parasympathetic how that will occur we will see in just a moment okay so this is the broad actions of sympathetic and parasympathetic okay now you can imagine you can understand why this is going to occur when the body is under stress sympathetic activity will increase what does body want during stress body want that heart should start beating faster okay that is what is needed so that blood supply to all the organs increases body wants that lung should dilate so that more oxygen is available to meet the tissue requirements okay body want pupil to dilate so that the field of vision increases during stress so basically any activity that is needed to overcome a stress will be a sympathetic response so we have done the basic understanding of the autonomic nervous system what is autonomic nervous system what are the main parts of autonomic nervous system and what are the broad functions of these two parts